In the news tonight, the Barbados Defense Force to get a new home and St. Anne's Fort to become a heritage site. A Calypso tent celebrates its artists who reaped success during crop over. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. Very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Broom. Thank you so much for tuning in. In our top story tonight, plans are in place for the Barbados Defence Force to have a new home. The announcement came this evening from Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley. Speaking at the, 50, the 45th anniversary parade at St. Anne's Fort, she said a new location has already been selected. Akeem Clinkett tells us more. Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley says throughout the BDS 45 years, it has served tirelessly with a commitment to excellence in and outside of Barbados. She adds that in another five years, by its 50th anniversary, the BDF will be transformed into a more modern organization. She says the force has outgrown St. Anne's Fort and by August 15, 2029, it shall have a new home in St. George. We have now settled in recent weeks the location in St. George and equally the scope of what a new Barbados Defense Force purpose-built headquarters will look like. And I look forward to the design works being completed over the course of the next year, such that we may be in a position to start the construction and ensure that by the time the 50th anniversary comes around on August 15, 2029, and regardless of who is here, that there will be true celebration that we have truly put you as a force to come of age. The Prime Minister also says that St. Anne's Fort will be preserved as a heritage site for people to see its history. This St. Anne's Fort will continue to have its heritage aspects preserved for the heritage economy, first and foremost of this country, and then for those who may want to see what it was like to visit a country whose history dates back Next year, we learn 400 years of its modern landing when the British first landed. It has been at the center of global events and indeed the enrichment of many outside of this nation. It has equally been at the center of the oppressive actions taken to many of our ancestors who were forced to do things against their will. So that there is no doubt that we must maintain the integrity of this site. Prime Minister Motley also thanked the organization for its commitment to protecting the island shores and highlighted its particular role in the country's battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. Hakeem Clinkett, CBC News. Remedial work and the construction of two new dormitories at the Regional Police Training Centre are expected to significantly increase the Christchurch facility's capacity for police recruits. Commandant Rodney Archer has revealed suspended renovations of Dormitory 1 and the female's dorm will restart in the last quarter of this year. The revelation was made during the recent passing out parade. Two new modern-day dormitories will also be constructed. Dormitories will be constructed on lands to the east of dormitories 2 and 3. One of these will be female specific and the combination of the two dormitories is expected to house approximately 60 additional students. This will better position the training center in assisting the Barbados Police Service to reduce its vacancy deficit. The repurposing of Sewell Cottage, commonly known as the Commandant's Residence, remains a future project that has been adjourned sine die. Gun violence has claimed the life of a young man. He is 20-year-old Darian Ward of Silver Sands Christ Church. In a statement, the Barbados Police Service said its operations control room received a call at 9.21 last night that a man had received a gunshot wound to his chest and was unresponsive. That incident occurred in the area of Sea Egg Avenue, Breedyland Christ Church. The man was transported to hospital by a private motor car, which was escorted by police. 
The victim succumbed to his injuries while receiving medical treatment. Investigations are continuing into this matter, and this latest shooting death brings Barbados's homicide toll so far for 2024 to 30. The Fall Bay Beach is expected to benefit from a massive cleanup from an American-based from American-based Barbadians. It is the brainchild of the Map family living in Miami, in association with the Future Center Trust and the St. Philip's South branch of the Barbados Labor Party. Trevor Thorpe tells us more. The organizing committee is now ready to move into action after delays brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Member of Parliament for the area, Indar Weir, says they're happy to partner with the MAP family and all involved with the initiative. He says Fall Bay Beach has been adopted by the St. Philip's South Branch. The history of Fall Bay Beach is well documented and I think it is our responsibility as a people in this constituency and indeed all the people of St. Philip uh, to make sure that we keep this beach as clean as possible uh, so that when people visit here they'll see that there's there are people who care. Um, equally, um, the fact that the Matt family has chosen to come to Fulbear Beach to do this cleanup says a whole lot. And I am really, really grateful uh, for the opportunity to work with them. Spokesman Karen McKee says the Matt family is originally from St. Philip South, adding that a 51 member contingent will be arriving in Barbados in the coming days to be part of the activities. For the family, this is a time for all generations to come together and give back to the community. As a person who strongly believes in collaboration, it is also significant that the members of the communities of St. Philip South have decided to join together with us on this project, contributing to the removal of waste to help in maintaining a safe environment. Coordinator and former Council General in Miami, Neval Greenwich, gives some background to the initiative. We started this yeah, since 2019, and we were supposed to make, they were supposed to make that visit here in early 2020, but then COVID popped in. Uh, but as soon as it was possible for them to travel, Karen immediately called me and said the family still wants to make some contribution to Barbados when they are here for the family reunion, and they would like to do the cleanup that they had planned. And I immediately got a hold of Mr. Glasgow, our branch, our branch president and minister uh, told them what we had discussed four years ago to refresh them on it, and they were very willing quickly. Branch president Andrew Glasgow says the Fall Bay Beach cleanup fits in with the activities of the branch. It's slated for next Saturday from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Trevor Thorpe, CBC News. We'll take a break here and when we come back, we'll tell you about celebration time for the C.O. Williams House of Soka. The C.O. Williams House of Soka celebrated with a motorcade the artists who did well during the various competitions for this year's crop over season. Moving off from the Warrens, the convoy of festivities traveled through several communities spreading joy. Rachelle Agard was there and she filed this report. In the CEO Williams House of Soka has five more reasons to celebrate as this year's crop over season comes to a close. They are Bruce Lee Almighty, who won tune of the crop and people's monarch, Mr. Showman, who captured the Scotiabank Junior Calypso Monarch title, Sir Ruel, who copped second place in the courtesy garage Piccadilly crop ahead of Billboard, who placed fourth and Mr. DJ, who is the first blind man to make it to the finals of the competition. Tent manager Sharon Carew white says she is proud of all those who made it on the big stage, particularly given the challenges and obstacles they overcame to get there. And she says they have a number of plans in the pipeline. We're off to Trinidad to take some of this great talent. We have some performances next year, 2025, when the Trinidad tents open up. So you'll have Cyril down there performing, Doyen, Raheem, Kwan, and um, the other teams are all just ecstatic to join us. But it was a major celebration for Cottage General Stores, as they all came together as a family in support of one of their own, Bruce Lee Almighty. For 20 minutes, all work stopped at the Willie branch as management, staff, and customers paused to welcome Bruce Lee home. 
Marketing manager Tammy Rose Evelyn says they are all extremely proud of Bruce Lee and urges all corporate entities to throw their support behind their staff. We love Bruce. Bruce is amazingly hardworking. So yes, he's always out when it's crop over time, but he works really hard. Um, so we have no problem with supporting him and backing him in anything he does. We would love for Corporate Barbados to support their own employees the same way because we believe in doing that. And we're just happy that he was able to be successful this time around and we can't wait to see what he does next. All of the celebrants say being a part of the 50th anniversary of Crop Over was an experience like no other. But the man of the moment, who captured the hearts of Barbadians with his hit song Tomorrow, says his victory is also a Carter's and House of Soka victory, as he could not have done it alone. I feel got to be awesome, you know, big up Carter's and for sure House of Soka for fun this lovely motorcade. But you see, we home, Carter's, big up boy thing for sure, because... Awesome. Not love for sure the people's money, because I know they videos that circle it or whatever, made the people vote for me and what's not. So I appreciate everybody, love everybody. The celebrations ended at Kilombo Emancipation Village. Rachel Lagarde, CBC News. And a group of tourists got a taste of Barbadian culture recently. Guests at the Seabreeze Beach House played mass as they took part in a Kaduman activity. Dancing to the beat of soca and calypso music and with some people in costumes, the visitors moved along a section of the south coast. Team member at Seabreeze, Danico Lowe, says the objective of the event was to show visitors how to party the Bajan way. We're here at Seabreeze as a team member. We show guests how we do it here, how we party and show a little culture. Not little, but a lot of culture, Bajan culture. So that is what we are here, that way we are celebrating right now. All for all in Barbados. One visitor who gave her name as Lindsay described playing mass as a great experience. I'm Lindsay from Pennsylvania in the United States. This is my sister Brittany and this is my husband Tony and we're here for the first time in Barbados. It's been a fabulous time. The beaches are absolutely amazing but most importantly the people have been absolutely tremendous like the individual who gave me this beautiful feather credenza. Um, it's been just an enjoyable time and we're really excited to come back someday. The head of a local consumer watchdog body is advising consumers against accepting substandard quality goods or services from businesses. Executive Director of the Barbados Consumer Empowerment Network, or BCN, Maureen Holder, is telling customers to take the goods back and get a refund. She adds there are numerous agencies customers can turn to if they're presented with any challenges in this respect. Barbadians are frustrated. They are complaining about making, making purchases with respect to food, household appliances, only to find that these things are of little use for the money that they have paid for them. We are encouraging Barbadians to use the power within their hands. You have also the Office of Public Council. You have the Fair Trading Commission. You have the Barbados Consumer Empowerment Network. All, we're all here to hear you on your complaints once you get a, a difference of opinion with respect to uh, taking back your purchases and seeking a refund. CARICOM member states will be given first preference to purchase excess natural gas in Guyana once production exceeds demand. Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat says already several countries have approached the Guyana government. Work is currently progressing on the Gas to Energy project, which will use gas from the Lisa Phase 1 and 2 projects in the Stabrook Block offshore Guyana. With an expected startup timeline of early 2025, the project will bring 50 million standard cubic feet of gas per day onshore. Well, stay with us. Weekend Sports is coming up. Good evening with Sports, I'm Anne-Marie Burke. Well, the West Indies has lost the second test with South Africa within three days, going down this evening by 40 runs at the Providence Stadium in Guyana. South Africa started the day on 2-23-4-5 in their second innings and were bowled up for 246 as Jaden Seals claimed 6-4-61, Rudakesh Moti 2-4-61 and Joma Warikan 2-4-21. Kavarene had a knock of 59 and Aidan Markham 51. 
Still with cricket, Horse Trinidad and Tobago on the 17th lead Barbados on the 17th by 38 runs. At the close of the first day of the second round of the Cricket West Indies Rising Stars two-day competition. Batting first at the Ishan Ali Park, TNT posted 121. Kamari Griffith took 3 for 17 and the Manny Roach 3 for 30. The Bajan Lazarus then bowled up for 96 in 41 overs. Brendan Boudou claimed 5 for 37. A.S. Bashant 3 for 24. The Trinidadian on the 17th then closed the day on 13 without loss in their second innings. Bring it back home now, BCA youth are trailing Wanderers by 104 runs at the close of the second day of the second series of the BCA three-day elite competition. Playing at Darrell's Road, Wanderers resumed their first innings on 304-3 and declared on 315-44. Seth Best was left unbeaten on 100, while Jonathan Drake's added 20, 97. The youth were bowled out for 99. Falling on, the youth closed on 112 for 8. Ian Boyce has 4 for 24 for match figures of 7 for 63. In the other matches at Bank Hall, Empire Trail picked quick by 59 runs. Scores picked quick 212, Empire 153 for 3. At Queen's Park, Spartan lead Wildey by 211 runs. Scores Spartan 205 and 94 for 3. Wildey 88 all out. Demario Goodman taking 5 for 20. At 3W's Oval, UWA closed on 74 for 2. In reply to MPC's 354 for 8 declared. And at Rice's, Yorkshire made 129. Gladiola won 94 for 7 declared. Well, Barbados are in second place after they won of the 2024 Crafter Triathlon and Aquathlon Championships. The hosts have 84 points, seven behind leaders Bermuda, as those two nations are the clear favorites to lift the title tomorrow. Trinidad and Tobago are third with some 60 points adrift of Barbados. Today in the 11-12 to 12 age group, Barbados got the 1-2 in the boys with Yelene Renwick-Williams first and Liam Beckles second. The 13 to 15 age group, Lillian McIntyre was second in the girls behind Luna Carew of Martinique, while in the boys, Bermuda Sanchez Smith came home first in a 1 2 sweep for the leaders. CBC's Smart C reports now on the 16 to 19 and the 20 to 21 age groups. 193 athletes participated in this morning's Carifta Games triathlon on the mighty Griner Highway, with the male and females 20 to 21 age group out of the blocks first for that 750-meter swim. Kobe Sylvester was first overall for Grenada in the males, and in the females, it was Zara Gaskin of Barbados, the winner. On now to the 16 to 19 age group, where Barbadians Finn Armstrong and Luke McIntyre in the boys were in a close battle with Jamie Bedford and Oliver Hayward of Bermuda in the 20-kilometer cycle leg. Then in the girls 16 to 19, Isis Gaskin of Barbados here transitioning from the bike ride to the 5K run had Nina James of Grenada, Erin Pritchard of Bahamas, and Janae Price of Trinidad and Tobago all in line with her for the top points. Back now to the boys, 16 to 19. This is Bedford of Bermuda to the right and Armstrong of Barbados battling for first place points in the final leg of the run. But in that final lap, Armstrong showed his long distance running strength and was all alone at the finish line to pick up 10 points for the host nation. Bedford finished second for eight points, and his teammate Hayward finished third for six points. McIntyre of Barbados was fourth for five points, as Barbados totaled 16 points overall from the boys 16 to 19, but Bermuda got 18 points, as their Jake Smith was fifth to add four more points to their tally. Barbados though did get another first place in the girls 16 to 19. Isis Gaskin separating herself from Grenada's Nina James in the 5K run to earn the maximum 10 points to James's eight. Pritchard of Bahamas plays third for six points with Barbados earning the most overall 13 as Asia Ennis got three points for a place in six to give Barbados that lead in that zone. Mark Seal, CBC Sports. Now, the final day of the Crifta is tomorrow with the Aquathlon and the mixed relays from 6.30 a.m. again on the Mighty Griner Highway. 
Now, there is a call for the sporting federations to create more regional competitions to help improve the competitive standard of our athletes. Speaking at the opening ceremony of this weekend's Crypto Triathlon Championships at the Acro Beach Hotel, Minister of Sport Charles Griffith implored federations to approach government for support as he wants to see more competitions next year outside of the annual Crypto and Caribbean Championships. We cannot wait for Carifta to be staging events where all of these athletes have an opportunity to showcase their skills. There must be a need, there is a need, sorry, for the countries to find funds, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting up my hand for Barbados, that we will contribute to holding or staging competitions outside of this. The only way that our athletes are going to sharpen and hone their skills is to be involved in competition on a regular basis. And it can't be a case where you just practice, practice at home, and you wait for one particular competition to showcase your skill set. Now the Barbados boys made it back-to-back -back wins in their Caribbean Football Union on the 14 Challenge Series being played in Trinidad and Tobago. After victory yesterday over St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they made it a 6-2 win today over Guyana. Player of the match, Jamarco Johnson scored a hat-trick, Trey Barker got a brace, while the other goal was scored by Adam King. With this win, Barbados is at the top of Group A with six points. And they face the Cayman Islands in their next match. Well, that's our news for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good night.